Hi guys and welcome back. So today I'm just going to run through all the basic equipment that you need to find gold here in the UK and post all the links below of where you can find them. First but most important is you need yourself a good quality gold pan. I like the Garrett Gold Traps. Um, it's just such a really nice clean pan to use. Lovely deep riffles in it. It's got a nice little edge in there for when you're doing your cleanups. Really lightweight. As you can see this one's very well used. And you want to get yourself a classifier. So you can put it on top so you're not panning out all the big rocks and boulders. I mean, you can scrape them out by hand. It's not essential. Um, but that's a good piece of equipment to start with. Is your gold pans, classifier, and a shovel. Oh, and a snuffer bowl. So that's basically all you really need to find gold in the UK. Because you can shovel your material into your classifier, pan it back, and suck out your gold from the bottom. Um, but when you start processing a lot more material, you're going to want to get a few other things. You're going to want to get yourself a bucket, so then you can put your classifier that fits nicely in your bucket. This one fits really well in there. There you go, perfectly in the top there, and then you can literally just shovel your material into the top of your bucket, classify it down, and then you've got a whole bucket of materials to work instead of just doing one pan at a time. And then you can just sit on a nice comfy rock and pan it out, or if you really want to, get yourself a sluice box. So this is a dream out sluice box. Quite a nice, small, compact, light, really easy to carry around, fits perfectly in the river and works really well, especially with these deep little pockets. All the heavy settled down there, all the lights swirl round and all the heavy material just sits in those little pockets. And uh, yeah, they catch the gold quite nicely. And then when you start getting a bit more into it and you're working a little bit better um, and you're getting down to bedrock, you're going to want to get yourself a crevice pump or a, a, a hand dredge. Um, so you can get all the material sucked off the bottom. Real simple design. It's just a ball, a washer, um, shovel handle, and nice and tight, really. Um, all these, I'll post the links to where you can get them for online. Um, and when you get yourself some really nice, tight, compact crevices, and you've, uh, you know, you you have big hand dredge isn't big enough. Well, it's too big, sorry, to get down into the bottom of it. Get yourself a mini pump. It's a lot smaller. A lot lightweight, compact, gets down to the bottom of those cracks and crevices quite nicely. Does the job really good. Simple but effective basic crevice material. So once you start, you know, you, you don't be digging gravel bars and you get a little bit more into it. Other little bits of equipment you can get. So a sucker bowl um, with a nice long metal tube on the end, which fits down quite nicely into those deep cracks and crevices that you just can't reach. Um, you get yourself a little mini pry bar so you can pry out all the rocks or boulders or anything else that's in your way um, does a real good job and the same does the, uh, the the crevice hook it's another fantastic piece of kit I use a wooden handle but I'll explain in a minute why I use a wooden handle um, but yeah they get down there quite nicely and a few little crevice picks so these are for the really small tight compact cracks and crevices where little small gold flakes can fall down into and all the micro fine gold and uh, yeah, these, this is just a real cheap set because you wear through them so quickly, it's quite nice to have, you know, a, a good set. Oh, and a little mini hand trowel. And that is for when you're digging out cracks, crevices, or even when you're sat there and you're sluicing away, you can scoop your bucket out, yeah, you material out your bucket and into your sluice. Um, a nice, comfortable way of doing it. And then for all you people out there who like to get in the water and start snorkeling and trying to find gold snorkeling, so you want basically a simple crevice equipment over there, plus you know, a good wetsuit or a good dry suit. So this is a good dry suit. I absolutely love a dry suit. A hood, a good snorkel. <clears throat> um, I choose to go for the snorkels with the ball valve at the top, so then I can dive down without having to worry about taking any water on, and that yeah, makes things a lot easier for me. And a good set of gloves. You wear through gloves so quickly, you wear your fingers out really quickly. I mean, I've only had these for a few months, and I need a new pair already. And anybody starting out in the UK, one thing I would highly recommend is the Gold Occurrences in the UK. This is a book made by a guy called Lee Palmer. Um, he's very well known in the gold prospecting uh, world in the UK and the Gold Panning Association. And in here, he has done a fantastic job of listing off lots and lots and lots of locations throughout the whole of the UK and whereabouts, you know, you, you can find them. Most rivers in the UK are gold bearing. Um, and you'll find this just as a guide because a lot of these places have been heavily hit, heavily hammered, heavily panned out. But I'll post a link below to the book. And it's a fantastic book to check out if you ever get a chance. And then you want to get yourself 
just a vial to keep your gold safe in. So somewhere to store it. I like to dry store my gold. So this is everything I found last year. Just a year's worth of gold. But a nice little vial to keep it in. Finishing pan. And then my custom made gold pans. Check those bad boys out. So just one more thing I thought I might add. Whatever you do, just check the areas that you're prospecting at. Make sure, for one, that it's not privately owned land and you've got permission to be there. For two, that it's not triple SI or any protected land because you'll find yourself in hot water. Um, there's people be getting fines big for it. Um, also, don't be a banker. Don't dig the banks. It causes damage that can't be undone. Um, if it's not in the water or below the water level, don't dig it. Simple, because if you're digging out of the water and you, 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 you know, you're digging up the bank of somewhere when the when it floods and the rains come down, it changes the course of the water flow and it just causes big trouble. And leave no trace. Always fill your holes back in behind yourself. Take all your rubbish away with you. Um, you know, just be sensible. Be very, very sensible. But apart from that, enjoy your hobby. I'd like to see you grow. For now, see you later.